$4.4 billion mission to build the impossible, a brand new 61-kilometer circulatory system of superhighways built directly through the heart of a city that was growing faster than anywhere in Australia. The old country roads were on the verge of collapse, completely choked by traffic. The plan demanded engineers transform these tiny lanes into massive eight-lane arteries, construct dozens of new bridges, and move millions of tons of earth, all while over a million people were trying to live and work right next door. This wasn't building a road in the middle of nowhere. This was a high-stakes surgical operation. One mistake could gridlock an entire city. So how do you thread a concrete mega-project through the backyards of a booming metropolis without tearing it apart? This colossal undertaking, known as the Western Sydney Infrastructure Plan, was born out of a problem that had been growing for decades. For years, Western Sydney has been one of the fastest growing regions in Australia. Its population is on track to swell from 2 million to 3 million people in just two decades. Thousands of new homes were built, but the roads connecting them were relics of a different time. Key routes were little more than two-lane country roads described by frustrated locals and politicians as nothing more than goat tracks. Every morning, thousands of commuters were trapped in traffic jams that stretched for kilometres, a daily reminder that development had sprinted far ahead of the infrastructure needed to support it. The announcement of the new 24-7 Western Sydney International Airport in 2014 was the final trigger. Without a massive and immediate upgrade, this multi-billion dollar gateway to the world would be an island, cut off from the very city it was meant to serve. The plan was not just about convenience, it was an emergency intervention to prevent the entire region from grinding to a halt. So, with the clock ticking towards the airport's 2026 opening, how did engineers begin the monumental task of forging a modern road network from these old country lanes? They started by tackling the main north-south artery, the Northern Road. This was not just a simple resurfacing job, it was a complete transformation of a 35-kilometre stretch of road. What was once a mostly two-lane road was about to become a modern, multi-lane divided highway, up to eight lanes wide in some sections, complete with dedicated bus lanes. Just one 3.8-kilometre section of this upgrade required moving 120,000 cubic metres of earth. But the true engineering showpiece of this project is a massive bridge at the intersection with Bringley Road. Instead of a simple traffic light intersection that would create a new bottleneck, engineers designed a grade-separated interchange where the northern road dives into an underpass, allowing traffic on both major roads to flow freely without stopping. The bridge forming the roof of this underpass is an engineering marvel. It is a 57-metre-wide voided slab post-tension structure, making it wider than the entire Sydney Harbour Bridge. To understand this clever piece of engineering, think of a solid chocolate bar. It is strong, but it is also heavy and uses a lot of chocolate. A voided slab is like an aero bar. Engineers remove concrete from the middle of the slab, where it is not doing much structural work, creating hollow voids inside. This makes the bridge deck much lighter without sacrificing much of its strength. Then comes the post-tensioning. High-strength steel cables, like massive guitar strings, are threaded through the concrete slab. After the concrete has hardened, these cables are stretched with powerful hydraulic jacks and then anchored, squeezing the concrete together in a state of permanent compression. This process makes the slab incredibly strong and resistant to bending, allowing it to span huge distances. The construction of this bridge was a dramatic race against time. To ensure its strength and integrity, the main deck had to be created in a single, non-stop concrete pour. A fleet of trucks poured 2,600 cubic meters of concrete continuously, enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool before the mix could begin to set. This single structure is a testament to the scale and sophistication of the entire project. But this was just one piece of the puzzle. What about the other vital connections? While the Northern Road formed the new spine, Bringley Road was the critical feeder, a 10-kilometer link that needed a similar drastic upgrade. It was widened from a simple two-lane road to a four- and even six-lane divided road, ready for the huge increase in traffic. The sheer quantity of materials needed for this transformation is hard to comprehend. 
just one stage of the combined Northern and Bringerley Road upgrades consumed over 99,000 cubic meters of lean mix concrete. That is an enormous volume. To put that into perspective, it is enough concrete to pour a standard footpath one meter wide from Sydney all the way to Canberra, and then almost all the way back again, a journey of nearly 1,000 kilometers. This was the scale of construction required, not for the whole project, but for just one material in one part of it. This upgrade also involved building new bridges, installing nine new sets of traffic lights to manage access, and adding a three meter wide path for pedestrians and cyclists, ensuring the new road served the entire community, not just cars. But the most advanced piece of engineering was yet to come, the high-tech lifeline that would connect directly to the new airport itself. This is the M12 motorway, a brand new 16-kilometer toll-free highway built to be the main artery for the airport. Because it will carry millions of passengers and tons of freight every year, it had to be built to last using some of the toughest road technology available. Instead of traditional asphalt or standard concrete slabs, engineers chose a method called continuously reinforced concrete pavement, or CRCP. Most concrete roads are laid in separate slabs with joints between them. These joints are a weak point where water can get in and the edges can crumble over time. CRCP is different. Engineers lay the road as one continuous ribbon of concrete, 400 millimeters thick. Before they pour, they build a massive steel skeleton inside the roadbed. For the M12, this required 2,500 tons of reinforcing steel. That is about a third of all the metal used to build the Eiffel Tower in Paris. This steel mesh holds the concrete together so tightly that even if tiny cracks form, they cannot grow or spread, creating a super strong, low maintenance surface built to withstand the heaviest traffic for decades. Weaving this new motorway through the landscape was also incredibly complex. Just one 6.1 kilometer section of the M12 required the construction of 11 new bridges to cross creeks, other roads and uneven terrain. But the biggest engineering battles were not always the ones you could see. Beneath the surface of these massive construction sites, engineers fought unseen battles every day. The land they were reshaping was not empty. It was filled with hidden histories and hidden hazards. During the upgrade of the Northern Road, workers uncovered asbestos contamination in old telecommunications pits and surrounding soil. This is a dangerous material that has to be handled with extreme care. All work had to stop while specialist crews were brought in to safely remove and dispose of the hazardous material, a slow and precise operation in the middle of a fast-paced mega-project. Before any dirt could be moved, teams of geotechnical engineers had to map out the world beneath their feet. They drilled deep into the ground, taking core samples of soil and rock to understand their stability and strength. This scientific work is the invisible foundation of the entire project ensuring that every bridge pier and every road surface is built on solid ground. Yet perhaps the most surprising challenge involved some of the area's smallest residents. The project's massive footprint, which involved clearing over 80 hectares of native vegetation for the M12 alone, posed a threat to local wildlife. Community members raised concerns about native turtles being killed on the newly upgraded roads. In response, the project team partnered with Western Sydney University on an amazing program called One Million Turtles. They used artificial intelligence to analyze video from dash-mounted cameras. The AI was trained to spot turtles on the road with over 90% accuracy, even at speeds of 80 kilometers per hour. This allowed them to create precise maps of turtle roadkill hotspots. Using this data, engineers are now trialing innovative turtle-proof fences and barriers designed to guide the animals away from the road and towards safer crossing points. It is a brilliant example of how cutting edge technology can be used not just to build, but to protect. With a total price tag of $4.4 billion, this is one of the most significant infrastructure investments in the region's history, with the M12 motorway alone costing over $2 billion. The final piece of the puzzle, the M12, is on a tight deadline to be open to traffic before the first planes land at the new airport in 2026. But this massive spend has not come without criticism. Some argue the project is just a multi-billion dollar catch-up for decades of poor planning, where governments allowed massive housing developments without building the roads to support them. 
With Western Sydney's population continuing to grow, others fear that focusing so heavily on roads is a missed opportunity. They believe it locks millions of people into a future dependent on cars and fails to build the world-class public transport network the region truly needs to thrive. From moving mountains of earth to building bridges wider than national icons and even deploying artificial intelligence to save local wildlife, the Western Sydney Infrastructure Plan is more than just concrete and steel. It is a massive, complex and controversial blueprint for the challenges of building tomorrow's cities today. If you were amazed by the scale of this project, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more engineering marvels, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Let us know in the comments what part of this build impressed you the most.